So why is it that, without fail, anytime you have to stop your car and wait for a train to cross, it's always when you're in a hurry, and as you're sitting there behind the wheel, impatiently tapping your fingers and letting out huffs of frustration, it feels like those boxcars passing before your eyes go for miles. Hey, could be worse. You could have to wait for a train that really is over a mile long. The longest train in the world, measuring in at one and a half miles, runs on the Mauritania Railway. Mauritania is located in northwest Africa. It has access to the Atlantic Ocean, but about 75% of its territory is covered by the Sahara Desert. There's just one national railway in the whole country that was opened back in 1963. It's 437 miles long and connects the northern iron mining town of Zuarat with the port city of Nouradhibo on the west coast. This railway is incredibly important for Mauritania since the iron ore industry makes up half of all the country's exports. Trains that run on the line usually consist of a handful of service and power cars and anywhere from 200 to 210 open wagons. In each of those wagons, there are around 85 tons of iron ore, if not more. Do the math, and you'll see that one fully loaded train can transport a total of about 20,000 tons of iron ore from the northern mines to the coast. As for how long the journey takes, it depends. If the train is empty and moving northeast to the mines, it takes 16 hours. If it's fully loaded and headed to the coast, it's 20 hours, almost an entire day. Now the fact that there's a one and a half mile long train chugging through the Sahara Desert on the daily route is cool and all, but check this out. You can also take a ride on the iron ore train. Well, as long as you're not expecting any fine dining or anything like that. Up until a few years ago, there was just one option for passengers to travel on this train, and that was to literally sit on top of it. Hop up, plop down, and have a seat right on top of the rocky iron ore. Doesn't exactly sound like my perfect vacay, but locals and adventurous tourists alike don't seem to mind sitting on rocks for hours on end. The hop-on option has always been free if you're up for it. But now, you can also choose to take a bunk in the only passenger car at the end of the train. It consists of cabins with six bunks in each. It only costs three bucks, but don't expect much for such a small fee. You won't get any special services, the compartments are really crowded, and they don't exactly get cleaned. Mm-hmm. People take bunks on a first-come, first-served basis, so don't expect to be assigned a specific bed. You won't get a ticket, food, or conductor to inform you of your whereabouts either. And to make things even more, um, fun, there's no fixed timetable, so the train often leaves earlier than planned. When it makes stops on the way, you better stay inside, since no one will tell you how long this or that stop will be. And if you're hoping to get some sleep in a passenger car, keep dreaming, because the ride is pretty bumpy and noisy. So probably the best thing you can do is choose the real deal and jump in one of those open wagons and save yourself 3 bucks. It's also a good idea to catch the train on its way from the coast to the mine, because otherwise, the cars will be full of iron ore, and that stuff makes some pretty powerful dust that's hard to wash off your face and clothes. Most people hop in at Nuadabo at around 4 p.m. when the train usually departs, and get off in Shom, not to go the whole 16-hour way, but just to get a little taste of the adventure. When a cart is empty, 10 people can fit in and still have room for luggage and whatnot. The locals, for example, even transport live animals and fruits to sell. Speaking of the locals, there will probably be lots of them on the train, as many people travel from town to town to visit their families. And you'll have all the time in the world to chat with them, as the sonic booms make sleeping pretty much impossible. Sonic booms are the sounds the cars make when they hit each other. They'll make your whole body shake, and they say the adrenaline rush is unbeatable. They say. There are a few more important things to know before you head to Mauritania for the adventure of a lifetime. First of all, there's the huge temperature change you'll go through. The Sahara isn't always hot like many people think. It is during the day, but it can be freezing at night. The wind is pretty strong too, so it's a good idea to bring warm clothes and a thermos with you. Okay, so are there any perks? 
Well, you get the starry Sahara sky instead of the boring old roof over your head. And as an added bonus, there's the most fantastic sunset and sunrise you can imagine. Plus, I mean, you can brag that you've been on the longest train in the world, hmm? In case the iron ore train sounds a bit too extreme, but you'd still like to go on a record-breaking ride, I've got some more options for you. Why not get yourself a ticket for the God, one of the longest passenger trains in the world? With 44 carriages totaling 3,600 feet in length, the train had more cars added to it in 2016 during the break season to fit in all the tourists that wanted to enjoy the gorgeous views of Australia. The GAN runs for 1,850 miles across the entire continent, from the southern city of Adelaide to Darwin in the north. The journey takes three days and two nights to complete. The conditions on the GAN are obviously way better than on the Mauritanian train, but the price is also way higher than three bucks. Tickets cost a minimum of around $2,000. Well, what about long trains in the US? Here's the kicker. America's longest trains are neither passenger nor cargo. They're those that once belonged to the Ringling Brothers Circus. They had two trains, or units as they called them, traveling at the same time with around 60 cars. Of those, 33 were pretty normal train cars for circus staff and their families. Four were for the animals, and around 20 were for equipment and props. Both units were around 5,000 feet long and weighed 4,000 tons when fully loaded. Before The Greatest Show on Earth closed in 2017, they would tour the entire country in two-year cycles. It took the circus crew about 6 hours to unload the lengthy train and 12 hours to set everything up for the show. The Ringling Brothers circus trains were also the longest in the world, if we're strictly talking privately owned ones. Okay, well, I guess we missed that train by a few years. But if you're into, you know, really epic journeys, no matter how long or short the train is, there's a real treat for you in Russia, and I'm sure you know where I'm going with this. How about giving the legendary Trans-Siberian Railway a try? Starting in the country's capital of Moscow, you'll travel more than 5,750 miles over the span of a week. Your final destination? The Pacific Coast city of Vladivostok. This train route is the longest in the world and covers eight time zones. Along the way, you'll see endless birch trees, the unbelievable landscapes of the Ural Mountains, and everyone's favorite, the deepest lake in the world, Beikal. If it's not the length of the train or the journey, but the speed that matters to you most, then get yourself a ticket on China's Shanghai Maglev train. It's currently the fastest commercially operated train in the world. Reaching top speeds of 267 miles per hour, it runs from Pudong International Airport to the Longyang Road Station. That's a distance of about 20 miles in under 8 minutes. But if you're looking to cover a larger distance and you still have the need for speed, then I'd recommend the THSR 700T. You might want to write that one down. Racing down the track at over 185 miles per hour, it goes from the Taiwan capital of Taipei to Kaohsiung City, a distance of 225 miles in just 90 minutes. That's like going from New York to Boston in an hour and a half. So, can we get one of those fancy trains too? Alright, Brightsiders, would you prefer to go on the longest or the fastest train journey? Let me know down in the comments. And if you learned something new today, then give this video a like and share it with a friend. But don't depart the train just yet. We have over 2,000 cool videos for you to check out. All you have to do is pick the left or right video, click on it, and enjoy. Stay on the bright side of life.